Holdings going public today in terms of a spin-off from Hertz, a company well known to many. I'm with the president and CEO of Herc, and that is Larry Silver. Good to see you hanging out here in your equipment outside the NYSE. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Great day here on Independence Day weekend in New York City. So explain how the company came to be, what part of Hertz was spun off, and what is your future trajectory now as an independent company? Well, essentially Hertz had two businesses. Primary business was car rental business, and we were the equipment rental business. So with today, it became the separation of the two business. Car rental is its own separate company, and now Herc is the its own separate independent uh, equipment rental company. Herc stands for, it used to be the acronym for Hertz Equipment Rental Com Corporation. We're now Herc Rentals going forward. Okay, what is this thing we're in right now? Well, we're in a utility vehicle, which you see on many job sites and construction sites. This one happens to be manufactured by Kubota and uh, very popular around uh, any type of a, of a construction site or any type of a big installation where people and gear have to get moved around pretty expeditiously. Now, I know that construction and industrial are the two big segments for you and very important ones for your revenues. What are you seeing in those two segments? What can we read into what your business is telling us about the U.S. economy? Well, look, those have been our traditional and our core business has been the industrial and construction business. Where we're moving and, and changing the mix of our business is really to focus on large urban centers like here in New York City, where there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure work, restoration, uh, renovation, and remodeling of all these superstructures that are around. We're really focused on something called square footage under roof and bringing new types of equipment and gear to that, many of which you see out here in front of, uh, front of the stock exchange this morning, and I'll talk to you about that as we take a little stroll. Yes, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Some very cool, I feel like I'm a, a grown-up kid, right? These are like the little boys play with toys like this. It's like being a, a grown-up with the ability to play. But it, this is, you know, serious business here. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, as you expand into these opportunities, other markets, what is your growth trajectory in terms of revenues and earnings? Uh, tell me what you can tell me publicly in terms of numbers. Well, look, we, we obviously we're in the middle of an earnings period, so it's uh, some of the the information is not yet publicly available for the current quarter, but last year we did $1.7 billion in revenue and we expect to continue to grow this business. We have 270 purposely built locations in North America. We have a few outside of North America, but our primary focus going forward is really in large urban markets uh, in North America, in the North American continent. Just think of all the large cities, LA, San Francisco, um, Seattle, New York, Chicago, Boston, these are the kind of markets that will have really a stable type of environment because there has to be a lot of work going forward, both in terms of infrastructure work and, as I mentioned, the modernization and uh, the urbanization uh, of these cities where the millennials are moving back into. So we feel it's a great market that will give us a more stable environment from the standpoint of it won't be, it won't be uncyclical or non-cyclical, but with the peaks and the valleys in that business will be, you know, will be uh, shorter and narrower than in the traditional construction markets or heavy mineral markets where we participated in the past. We won't abandon the past, we'll just continue to grow our new businesses and our new uh, opportunities outside of what was our core business. Totally makes sense. You're going to get out of the car that way, I'm going to get out this way, I'm going to meet you, and then we're going to take a little walk down okay. and take a look at some of this stuff. Great. Okay. Tread carefully. All right, so here we have, and this is so such amazing. It's a cherry picker, right? Well, no, no? no? it's uh, kind of like a cherry. This picker. is what's called an atrium boom. Okay, I'm this sorry to know. This is one that. of the things that you would use in a large urban market in some of these magnificent buildings that have these large atriums where you have to go up and either change the lights or clean something up in the ceiling. So this is a particular unit specifically designed for this type of a market where it'll move into the, into the atrium right, and allow the operator to go high up in the air to do whatever needs to be done. So this is called an atrium boom. I like it. Let's wander down here because okay. you've got something else. I'll meet you this way. I'm going to tread carefully. All right, that brings us to this little All thing. right, so that's one of our newest booms made by one of our partner manufacturers, JLG. That's called a 150 super boom. So that has a 150 foot lift in the air. So an operator will stand inside that cage with all the appropriate safety gear on, right? And he can go 150 feet up in the oh air. So if you look at the top and those figures needed to be clean, 
he would get in that boom and go up there. So it's a tremendous, it's one of the biggest pieces of equipment of this type that we have in our fleet and it's called a 150 Super Boom. So Larry, I would assume from your customer perspective, it is much cheaper to rent than buy, and that's where the opportunity well, comes Well, there's in. a secular change from ownership to rental. Obviously, when you own something, you have a big capital cost up front. Yeah. What we do is we help our customers avoid that big capital cost, take the equipment and use it for only the time period they need, so they're essentially paying for it for a shorter period of time and only when they're using it. Because if you ride around and you see much of the equipment that exists in North America, most of the time it's sitting idle, right? You know, it's interesting. It's a part of the sharing economy, which is this huge trend, and I would have never thought that equipment rental would be part of it. So it's very interesting to very, hear that. Very, very similar to what you hear about the emerging sharing economy, whether it's in... You're like the Uber of uh, equipment. We think we're going to be, and in fact, you know, we have a, a brand new app that we uh, introduced today. Oh, that's awesome. As a matter of fact, and I can show it to you here, maybe. And um, so you're going to essentially like order. A you can order online right here. You can place an order for equipment for renting an equipment online. You can uh, you can watch it being delivered like you can an Uber car arriving. It'll come down this street. It'll notify the operator that the equipment has arrived. He can come down, pick it up, check it in. When he's ready to call it off rent, he doesn't have to go to a phone. He can go right to his app call it off rent so he's not spending money. It'll then dispatch one of our uh, delivery vehicles to come and pick it up and move it back, move it to the next job or back to our shop. Great idea. What about the safety equipment? Do you provide that as well or does somebody have to have that in place before you deliver? It depends. If the, oper if the, uh, the uh, company that's renting the equipment will do all the safety training that's necessary, generally our customers will have safety gear, but if they don't have the appropriate safety gear for a lift like this, we'll provide it and we'll train their operators before we ever let them get into it. Love it. Let me uh, ask you, we came from this vehicle here. Let's walk up to this one because sure. we missed this one. This, what we're walking towards is a, a new product range, part of what we call our Pro Contractor Tool Series, with a, a, a new partner of ours, the Hilti Group. Hilti is the preeminent leader in this type of equipment. This is hammer drilling, core drilling, things for doing renovations and restoration in concrete and various kind of work. And uh, we've recently partnered with Hilti. They're, uh, they're the largest manufacturer in this space. And th this is a product line that I talked to you about the secular change of, from ownership to rental. Traditionally, this had been an owned category because there wasn't a reliable source to rent it from. Well, what we're doing is we're providing a reliable source to rent this equipment from. And the Hilti folks have partnered with us to be here today. A number of these folks are a part of the Hilti team in, in helping to demonstrate this equipment and uh, really make us the leader in the rental industry for Hilti, Hilti equipment. Well, you know, it's been fascinating talking to you. I think a lot of people did not know very much about the equipment rental part of the Hertz story. So we're glad you shared your story with us did a little show and tell. It's been fun. Larry Silver, good luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity and I hope you enjoy the day out here. Take time to visit the rest of the gear. We have plenty of folks that can explain what we do. Excellent. Thank Take care. Thank you so much.